Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In regards to today's video, we're going to be uncovering more of the scandal that is the Arrive Can scam. Now, I'm going to take us back to again last week's committee hearings. As you can see from the website, this week there's really nothing. There was two committee hearings today, there's going to be one tomorrow. However, last week, <laughs> I just, there was a whole slew of them. So I'm just kind of catching up to them. And the one that I want to cover today is with David Yo. Now, he is the member of Dalian who is and was the CEO of Dalian. Now, we played a video not too long ago about the Minister of Treasury, Anita Nan, who not too long ago found out that Dalian uh, was a contractor when she was part of D&D. &D. Yesterday, that a D and D employee named David Yo was awarded a contract, the Arrive Can contract, while he was also CEO of Dalian Enterprises. You were the Minister of Defense at the time. Were you aware that he was employed in the department at the time? Were you aware that he was a benefactor of that contract? I was definitely not aware. I was very surprised to hear this news. I am heartened to see that he has been suspended from his role as a public service employee. And due to this very serious nature of these issues, I know that DND is launching an internal investigation into the matter. We are, as a government, in the process of suspending contracts with Dalian, uh, but the answer to the question is no, I had no idea. Now, obviously, just by looking at her, you could tell she's full of BS here. And when we watch a little bit further into this clip and the reporters are pushing her on, is this a conflict of interest? Is this general practice with the government? Yeah, all that stuff. She gives this answer. And again, you can just see how uncomfortable and how much she's trying to think of an answer because she's been backed into a corner. All contracts were suspended. Did you say all contracts with the government were suspended, not just D&D? For Dalian? We are looking at contracts across the government with Dalian to seek to suspend those. Is it, a normal government, normal, is it a normal government practice to award contracts to employees in their own department, sort of outside contracts to government employees for work within their own department? Is there a rule about that or should there be? There is certainly uh, a rule that would prevent conflict of interest of that sort. And I was extremely surprised to hear that this individual was an employee of the Government of Canada. But as I said, he has been suspended and we are also seeking to suspend contracts with that company, Dalian. But all that aside, today's video is about Garnet Genis and his questioning of David Yeo, as well as the Indigenous Affairs Minister, Patty Haidu. And both of these, when you look at them side by side, make you wonder what Indigenous procurement and services and all these policies are actually doing outside of making individuals money and aren't actually helping Indigenous individuals. So without further ado, let's get into the first clip. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Yao, it's good to see you again. You testified uh, before Parliament uh, on October the 31st of last year. I did at the time ask you, what would you say you do here? Uh, and this was uh, one answer you gave in the course of that round. You said, I am an executive on the board of directors for Dalian, and I maintain all of the governance as it relates to the PSAB. Uh, Mr. Yao, was that the truth as of October 31st of 2023? So, Mr. Chair, um, just a correction. It's Mr. Yo, okay, uh, not Yao. <laughs> how, so. about, how about just an answer? <laughs> but then uh, I will answer you for sure. Um, but, you know, it ends up that we were in that, that time frame of dealing with lawyers, and I had been, you know, directing sir, at a director sir, level. Sir, 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 sir. Uh, October the 31st, you were before this committee. Yeah. You answered my question in a particular way. Was what you said to the, to the uh, committee then assembled on October the 31st, was it the truth? So at that time, there was no divesture because we were working on it. And were you, quote, on the, uh, were you, quote, an executive on the board of directors for Dalian? 
Were you the one who, quote, maintained all of the governance on October the 31st? Was that true? Yes or no? Sure. Yes. It was true. Uh, well, that's, what, that's the answer you're looking for, so I'm going to give it to you. No, sir. I'm looking for right. the true answer. <laughs> so, the true answer uh, is Just as I we was on October flux. the 31st. We were in flux during that time period in order to, obviously, we had 60 days to get everything done, and we did that with Dalian and got our nondisclosure in and our no access in. Okay, sir, sir, the, sir period, you're, you're, so. you're, not, you're not in flux. You either, you either were on the board of directors or you weren't on the board of directors, Right. You know, a, 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 a person is either, is either pregnant or not. They're either on the board of directors or they're right. not on the board of directors. They're not half pregnant well, and they're not half on the board of directors. You have said you that, that uh, shamefully the media have claimed that you, were, that you were on the board of directors and a government employee at the same time without asking you. Well, maybe they didn't need to ask you because they foolishly assumed that what you told Parliament on October the 31st was true. Now, sir, your LinkedIn account... Your LinkedIn account says that you were a business owner at Dalian Enterprises from 2001 until present, and you were employed by the Department of National Defense continuously from 1987 until present. So, uh, again, uh, to, to, to your truthfulness or not, was your, was your LinkedIn account accurate? In, in description of those timelines? Well, if, if you look at LinkedIn, uh, it, is not a non, it is a non-authoritative source, first of all. It's LinkedIn. It's a web page. All right? Second yeah. Of all, yeah who, who, why, why would we believe what's on the Internet, sir? It, it it's, say, it's your own LinkedIn you profile, sir. On the internet? Why, why would we expect you know that you would put accurate information on your own LinkedIn page? <laughs> Outrageous. All right. Just, you know, just, so, 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 Chair, I'm, I'm okay. Mr. Just, 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 Mr. Chair, I'd like to answer that question if I could. Oh, well, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. January. It is his round of questioning. I'll just ask you to... Um, we can all hear you quite clearly, so if you could just keep that in mind, well, Mr. Jennings. Thank you, thank you, Chair. I am, I am getting a little bit excited here. <laughs> now, I absolutely love when the chair is John Williamson. He's he's hilarious. He's very fair, but it's crazy that this guy is trying to discredit his own LinkedIn account because it's a website which he himself has to fill out for the particular reason that LinkedIn is used to show your employment history, what you're doing, your current status, your previous status. It's an online resume. It's your information. But he's trying to discredit it saying, well, it's it's just a web page. Yeah, that you filled out. So what is your defense here? It just makes no sense. Uh, uh, sir, uh, you, you have, you have uh, on your LinkedIn profile, uh, a claim that you were simultaneously working for the government and uh, leading Dalian. You told this committee on October the 31st, pardon me, not this committee, but you told that committee on October 31st that you were uh, working, uh, you were on the board of directors for Dalian. You were at the time employed by the government. Um, and, 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 and you have subsequently said, oh, no, 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 I, I, uh, there, was, there was some flux going on. But you clearly were in a conflict of interest, weren't you, sir? You were clearly doing both at the same time. And now you're trying to weasel your way out of it after the fact. But you were clearly in a conflict of interest, were you not? So, okay, so I, I need to answer the LinkedIn side of it first. First of all, it's a non-authoritative source, and it's on the Internet. It's your it say, profile. It did, say, it did say 1987. Did you write it? It did not describe all of my service that I have done. I have done... 14 years in the reg force, 10 years in the reserves, 20 years as a contractor. I've had 36 years in the department. Did, did you subcontract the writing of your LinkedIn profile, sir? The question that Garnett posed there at the end was actually a callback to an earlier question from the NDP member, Blake de Desjardins, who asked David Yo, what is it that your company or you actually do? Because it sounds like you don't do anything. And considering you're engaged in the same project, it seems unbecoming that you did not have knowledge that GC Strategies had this sophisticated layer of task, Oscar, task authorizations uh, that hid the actual work that these subcontractors, subcontractors were doing, including your company. And I'll ask one more time, what does your company do? What did you do absent of hire other subcontractors? Yeah, it, it's the normal course of action for general contractors. You can find that in any... any no, no, what do you do other than that? Other than that, hmm. 
So I'm, I'm trying to get to that. Um, you know, when it comes to what we do, and this was asked to me in, in Go, OGO as well. And so yeah, it's I'm still sure confusing. That that's, yeah, well, it, it's, it happens with every company. No, this happens country. with your company. Yes, I'm asking about your company, uh, sir. Okay, what fine, does your company telling, actually do? Yeah. Mr. Well, I'm, I'm going to give the floor to, to Mr. Yao for, for an answer, but your time is up, yeah. so please don't interrupt sure. him. Mr. Yao, I'll, I'll allow, allow you to answer them. Moving on to the next person. Yeah, every, every general contractor with the government, when it comes to TBIPS contracts, PS Online, TSPS, it doesn't matter. You know, we are the general contractor and the prime contractor for the government. We hire subcontractors to do the work. So what we do is contract management, not the actual work. Now listen to that guy. How absolutely bonkers is that, that our government is hiring middlemen to then find actual people who can do the job that the middlemen cannot do. Why are we do well, like, why is our money going to this? Why doesn't the government just hire the correct people? Why are they hiring people to find the people to do the job that they should have been able to do from the get go? This is why all these scandals are happening. This is why all of this is getting uncovered. It makes no sense. And in the next set of questions by Garnett, he uncovers basically the scandal behind indigenous services and how it doesn't actually benefit any indigenous people. Uh, Mr. Yo, besides the two people at your company, how many indigenous people benefited from the $7.9 million that the government of Canada gave you for the work you did on Arrive Camp. So in reference to the 7.9 million, which is actually 4.9, our actual representation of profit in that helps not only our pay our staff, but also helps with our staff augmentation with Karatex as well. How, because I how have many a indigenous model. people? So you're not answering my question. You keep so, talking about your staff, so, but there's two of you. So, 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 okay. There are there are two indigenous people who benefited you and your partner. Yeah, uh, yeah. But but how many other indigenous people benefited from uh, from this uh, particular outlay from the government of Canada? Well, I mean, we we do work with the Algonquin College on uh, staffing uh, bursaries and and things like that. Uh, I do have outreach back to my own, you know, reserve in Alderville. Uh, but as far as, you know, uh, benefiting... What, 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 is that, what does that even mean, though? Like, like you, you, have, you have reached back, so you, you know, when you make a lot of money, you, I don't know... Uh, like, like how, how, do, how, do, how do Indigenous Canadians benefit so the, the PSAB, from you the PSAB, getting this deal? Yeah. Sure, the, the PSAB process and the PSAB policy, that's a government policy that we... we favor because it's a great policy um it, it's not i'm, made I'm sure you, you think it's to, a great <laughs> sorry it's not on. made to it's not made to help uh indigenous communities across the country it's it's made to help the entrepreneur that's trying to get government contracts to grow his business so okay you know, in that context it's not made for helping out indigenous communities across the country okay so so you 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 just said you just said that the government's indigenous uh, procurement policy, in your view, is not made to benefit indigenous communities across the country. It's made to benefit the particular entrepreneur. It's made to in help the entrepreneur get access to government contracting that would allow them to grow the company right. in whatever fashion they want. So your, your, your position is the policy made you money, therefore it's achieving its objective, regardless of the impact on indigenous communities across the country. So, you, so that could be your interpretation, but it's not the reality. The reality is... Sorry, I, I, sorry, I, just, I was just par repeating what you just said, though. Yeah. Well, no, you weren't repeating what I just said. But in, in the context of the PSIB, um, it's spread out across the entire country, and there's lots of people that are actually working within the, the framework of that. No, but, but, okay, of us, I'm, but sir, that, that actually isn't so what you it, said before. But, but to, to broaden this out, so... Uh, uh, from what I understand, you, you've gotten your, your company has, has received um, hundreds of millions of dollars in contracts from the Trudeau government since since 2015. Um, that is under the, the framework of a policy that I thought was intended uh, to actually elevate the, the conditions uh, that indigenous peoples in this country are, are living in. Um, and you're saying, well, no, it's it's good enough that that process made me money. 
That, that would seem to go against what Canadians would expect of the policy, surely. My understanding of the value that you put out was, uh, was $91 million. I've got it in front of me from 2015 until now. Um, but at the same time, you know, you can look in the PSAB and the PSIB policy and okay. nowhere okay. will it be. Sorry, just because my time is about to run out, Chair, I'd like to move a motion that the committee write to INN to recommend that they investigate abuses in the Indigenous procurement system. Now, I'm sitting here like I'm sure most of you are wondering, how is this even possible? How is that the policy? Well, funny enough, as this motion is being presented, the NDP member Blake comes back in and clarifies to David Yo that uh, he's wrong. The policy actually is supposed to be helping Indigenous individuals. And a potential misrepresentation by Mr. Yo about PSAB contracts. As a matter of fact, 33% of all contracts by PSAB must be completed by Indigenous service providers, including when work is subcontracted. And so, Mr. Yo, you've spoken a great deal of your experience in working with subcontracting and your expertise of being a contractor of this great magnitude that you can solve all the government's problems with these great general contracting, but you don't actually know the policy. Now, it's absolutely wild to me that that David Yo guy could say that that's how the policy is when it actually isn't. Yet the following day, it got even more crazy and more heated when uh, Garnett was questioning Patty Haidu, who I mentioned was the Minister of Indigenous Services. Now, this lady is very rude, very condescending, uh, has a hard time answering a simple question again. And here we have another liberal chair who doesn't actually do anything that he's supposed to. But let's get into the clip. Minister Haidu, Canadians would expect that the Indigenous procurement system be designed to benefit Indigenous peoples and Indigenous communities, not a small number of well-connected NDP Liberal government insiders. Dalian is a two-person company. Uh, they don't do actual work. They just get government contracts and subcontract to others. How many Indigenous people benefited from the $7.9 million that your government sent to Dalian for a RIVE scam? I think I'll just blow by all the stupid slogans and answer the question. Uh, well, I'll tell you that the Indigenous Business uh, Directory is I'd love for you to answer the question. How many Indigenous people benefited from the $7.9 million that your government gave to Dalian for a RIVE scam? So I think I'll just blow by the stupid slogans and begin by answering the question in a sincere way, which is what I would hope we would all do around this table, because these are serious issues and sincere concerns. Uh, so uh, let me just back up and say Indigenous Services Canada does manage... But please don't back up. Please just answer the question. I would love to do that. Are you ready to listen? Go for it. All right, great. How many Indigenous people benefited? Just the number would be fine, actually. So the Indigenous Business Directory is a directory that Indigenous Services Canada maintains to provide to other departments of Canada uh, a list of uh, businesses that have been verified as either... Uh, so, as sorry, Minister, this is a two-person company. They don't do any actual work. They're listed on the Indigenous Businesses Directory. They receive contracts and subcontract. That's, that's all they do. They get government contracts. They subcontract the work to others. Okay. How many Indigenous people benefited from the $7.9 million that your government gave to Dalian? I'm not looking for a history of the program. Point of I'm order, just looking Mr. for Chair. a number. Well, I think that... Sorry, just one second. I'll stop the clock. Uh, Mr. Batiste, what's your point of order? Uh, the member has... Asked it's repetition. Uh, she's trying to answer the question. <laughs> it's repetition. He keeps getting, uh, it's keeps repetition. Getting, the minister keeps getting. Jamie, respectfully, as, learn as the rules. Order, it's okay, not point of order. it's not a point of order, and it's not a repetition well, issue. I'm repeating the question the time to, because I want the answer. Know, you're coming in from another committee, but she's, she's a okay, minister. You're not. Let minister, her answer. We okay? are into debate. Talk, talk the... We are into debate, but um, I will say that, uh, as I noted, we ask the minister questions. We allow the minister to answer. Just the number. That's all I need. So I'll turn the floor to the minister and uh, to continue with your response, please. So to understand the Indigenous Business Directory, you have to understand what it's for. And the Indigenous Business Directory is to provide uh, assurances to other departments, including Procurement Canada, that the people on that list do uh, are Indigenous. And so that is the sole purpose of the list. It's about indigeneity. So if we literally take what she just said, it sounds like this whole policy or this whole program literally just puts... The names of companies on a sheet writes indigenous beside it and that's all they need to do and then a company which has two individuals one could be indigenous both could be indigenous one could be half indigenous they just get a slew of contracts because they're 
indigenous. And from there, the contracts don't actually have to benefit any indigenous communities or any other indigenous people because those individuals who are making that $8 million are indigenous. So that's all that matters. And this is what Garnett confirms in the next clip here. Okay. Uh, Minister, what Mr. Yo told the Public Accounts Committee yesterday is that the purpose of the program is not to benefit Indigenous communities, but only to benefit the particular individuals who receive the contracts. What you've just said effectively confirms that. It sounds like you have no information about uh, whether Indigenous peoples or communities actually benefited beyond the two people who got $7.9 million for no work. Uh, of all Dalian's contracts, totaling at least $91 million under your government, did all of those $91 million worth of contracts benefit from the Indigenous procurement set aside? And what percentage of the subcontractors were Indigenous? I would like... Um I'm actually kind of annoyed by this question because it implies that if an Italian person owned a company, then only Italian people should benefit from that company's business. Man, this lady is dumber than a bag of rocks. She's literally in the indigenous service. It's an indigenous policy. It's not like there's Italian policies out there or Muslim policies or French policies. It is literally a policy for indigenous individuals. Why? To benefit indigenous individuals. Even the NDP member, Blake, said 33% of these contracts need to go to indigenous people, especially subcontracts. So when Garnett's asking how many subcontracts went to indigenous people, and she starts to throw that this is a, a racist thing, that, oh, well, why should we clarify how many people are indigenous? That's exactly what your service is. You are the Minister of Indigenous Services. We don't have policies for other groups like this. So what is she talking about? And in that is an implicit, I would say, stereotype. Indigenous business owners are just like non-Indigenous business owners. And some Indigenous business owners have many Indigenous employees. In fact, many, okay. uh, many businesses do. Minister, but I'm going to spare you the false like indignation here. Okay. That lur lur Let me, Mr. Chair, just, just, yeah, Let, yeah. Your question is implicitly no, no, Mr. Chair, I'm going to jump in in accordance with the rules. Discriminatory. Yeah, of, of course. Here we go. Here we go, Minister. Uh, your, your government faces intense heat over this corruption scandal and your response your only response is not to answer the question but to accuse other people of racism this is so My typical response, of your government Mr. now i'm going to finish minister here, here here are the facts right dalian is a two-person company they don't have employees there's just two of them right so does it seem to you the problem that this company can get uh close to a hundred million dollars worth of contracts from your from your government they don't do any work they subcontract that there's no tracking of whether Indigenous people actually benefit. There's no tracking about whether other Indigenous businesses receive subcontracts. A and that simply by being the middleman, they're able to claim this massive set-aside when there is no tracking of actual benefits to Indigenous communities across the country. Don't you think that's a problem? What I would say is that uh, whatever has happened, uh, Contractors should be held accountable, regardless of whether they're indigenous or not. The rules don't. But change. do you think this the is an abuse of the indigenous, indigenous procurement contract. program? Do you think this is an uh, abuse uh, of the intention look, of the program? Yeah, I would ask. There's only uh, ten seconds. I would left. say I if people are on the, the list minister. who are not indigenous, it is an abuse, and that is why Dalian. So you're fine with what happened with Dalian? Okay, we're out of time on this one. I'm going to have to move to the next uh, person. So in the end there, she admits that she's fine if Indigenous people abuse the system. She only has a problem if non-Indigenous people use, abuse the system, which is completely backwards. If anybody is abusing a system, they should all be held accountable for that. But hey, I'd love to hear what you guys think about this one. I know it was a little bit longer of a video, but these committee hearings, sometimes they go a little bit long. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks so much.